Hello, and welcome to the 10th video in my Ableton Live 10 Basics series. In this video, we're going to cover some essential steps to help you stay organized within your projects. Before we begin, just a quick reminder to leave a like down below and hit that subscribe button. This will help me continue to bring valuable content to awesome viewers like you. So the reason I actually hope that you'll watch this video all the way through is because staying organized is actually incredibly important. It's something I used to never do in the past. I always thought that taking a little time out to organize would just mess up my creative flow. But honestly, that could not be farther from the truth. Keeping a project organized saves me tons and tons of time. Because when I have a task in mind, I can literally go exactly where I want to go, never second guess whether I'm editing the correct track or MIDI clip, and everything visually just makes a lot more sense. I really couldn't name off all the benefits of staying organized, but just trust me whenever I say it's completely worth it. So I'm just going to cover the fundamental things that I recommend doing in order to keep your project organized. Step one is naming your tracks. If you are not naming your tracks, then please start doing so. I can't tell you how much time I've saved by adding meaningful names to each track instead of just scrolling back and forth, trying to find the track I need because I forgot what the name of the sample was or whether it was audio track one or audio track two. You get the idea. So naming a track is pretty straightforward. You just come over here and whether it's a new audio track or a new MIDI track, you just right click and then you click rename or you can hit control R for the hotkey and then you just type in the name you want. Simple as that. Step two is to use color coding. I normally go with a certain theme when it comes to color coding and try to stick with that as far as it goes. I make all my drums yellow, lead synths are light green, Effects are usually pink, bass is red or orange, secondary synths like arpeggios are usually light blue or maybe a light green, and the list goes on. Just make sure whenever you change the color of your track that you also assign the clips to be the same color. So to demonstrate this I'm going to go ahead and add in another MIDI clip. And then I'm going to change the color of my Vox to be, let's just go with this nice light blue or slightly green light blue. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and then as you can see, the clip is still that gray tone that we started with. So in order to fix that, we right click, come down here to assign track color to clips. And there we go. Step three is grouping. Grouping is amazing because not only can you use effects on an entire group of sounds, but it also adds additional separation to each part of your song. This helps you think less about the other pieces of the song and focus more on the part that you're actually concerned about. So to group together one or more tracks, we hold control and select the tracks we want to group together, and then we press control G. Now from here, you can also change the color and the name of the entire group. I'm just going to make this match with the yellow color, and I'm going to rename this to Verse Drums. Now let's say I wanted my drums to be slightly different during the drop versus the verse. I could literally duplicate this entire group and make whatever adjustments I wanted to and rename this to Drop Drums. Step four is to delete any unused tracks. This one's pretty straightforward. You want to delete any unused tracks simply because they will take up additional screen space that you're not using. And if something is just sitting in there for a while, then you may forget whether or not you were actually using it and that just creates additional confusion. So let's just say that I have a random track here that I'm not using whatsoever. Just I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of that because I don't need it there. We just click delete. Step five is using song locators. Song locators are super handy for jumping back and forth between different parts of your project. And overall, they just save a lot of time. On top of this, they actually help you think deeper about how your song should be structured. 
So to add a song locator or time locator, I'm not really sure what they call it, but it just says locator. We're gonna hover up here and whenever that speaker icon appears, you right click, click add locator, name it to whatever you would like, and then make sure it is moved to the correct spot in order to correlate with your song. Step six is collections. Collections are just downright awesome. In Ableton 10, they give you a total of seven collections. You can basically just think of these like drawers on a toolbox that are super quick and easy to access. So these are where you would want to keep your most commonly used tools so that way you can access them as quickly as possible. Whenever a great idea pops into your head, it's super important that you get it laid out as fast as possible so that the idea doesn't get lost or fade away somewhere all because things were just taking up too much time. Whenever you first play with collections, you're going to want to rename them in a format that makes sense. So whenever you right click, there's the option to rename. I just laid these out in a way that made sense to me. And then if you want to add or remove something from a collection, you just simply go to that plugin or sample or whatever it may be, audio tool, and then you right click and then you're going to want to click one of these, whichever one correlates best with the tool you're trying to add. So let's say I wanted to add Fab Filter Volcano 2, that's an effect, so I would add it to my effect section. And then if I need that, whenever I come back up here, I can access it super quickly and easily. And if I want to remove something from a collection, I can simply go and find what I'm trying to remove, right click, click that same collection that it already exists in and that will effectively remove it from your collection. Okay guys, that about wraps up this video. I really hope you learned something. If so, be sure to share it with your other producer friends and I hope to see you back for the next one. Take care and have an amazing day.